So the next method for helping reduce EMI we're gonna look at is proper grounding. By definition, ground means a point where we have zero potential. But if we think about this, we can only ever truly have zero potential at a mathematical point. And the reason for that is because in the real world, of course, our connecting wires and our cabling is going to have some non-zero resistance. So what that means is we might have a true ground here. So let's say this is our true ground. And maybe we have some other point in our circuit that we want to also ground. So what we have done in the past is we just connect this with the wire and we say, all right, this is now at ground. And so what we're going to see is that oftentimes we can have this issue of ground loops. And so with our ground loops, we essentially have two points that both should be at ground, but are actually at different potentials. So two points should both be at our ground potential, but at different potentials. And so the reason they're gonna be at different potentials is due to some current in the ground loop. So due to current. So for instance, we said that this connection here is gonna have some resistance. So let's go ahead and take that out and approximate it with a resistor. And of course, this might be a small value, but as our cabling links increase, that value can be larger and larger. And so let's say we have some circuit doing something such that we're gonna have a current flowing down through here and through this resistance. And so of course, if we have current flowing through this resistance, we're gonna have a voltage drop across it which means that this point on the right is of course no longer going to be at ground. And so this is what we're talking about when we talk about ground loops. Sort of another slightly more complicated example of that is detailed in the Stephen textbook. So the author is describing an experience he had with ground loops where what he was doing is he had some type of video camera. So let's see if I can draw a half decent video camera here. And so the video camera had some circuit that it outputted, so it had some small level signal that it was outputting like this. And what they wanted to do was to take this signal from the video camera and send it to another location for an overflow crowd. So maybe somebody was watching in one area, uh, but they wanted to be able to take that signal somewhere else. Uh, so what they did is they sent that along a coaxial cable. And so we can, let's see. So here's sort of our outer conductor and our inner conductor. So I apologize for those broken lines. That's not intentional, those should be solid lines. And then over here, it's going to some display. So let's close our outer conductor. We have our inner conductor coming here. And this is going to some display, which is being displayed to our overflow crowd. So maybe we've got a little person talking over here. And so of course, to power all of this equipment, they're ultimately gonna to have to be pulling from some AC power source somewhere. And of course, if there's not an outlet right next by, next to the camera, uh, or our, our, our display over here on the right, what they're going to do is have an extension cord. So of course, inside our extension cord, we're gonna have multiple conductors. Uh, so to simplify, let's say we have our neutral path and sort of our hot side. And so we're also going to have some AC load. Let's simplify that down here. And so of course, if you are, and so this is a non-ideal, so this is our resistance of this return wire. And so it's good practice to of course, always ground things at the same location. So this external point here, we wanna ground our outer conductor of our coaxial cable. So that's that same point over here. So we can take that down and connect it to what should be our ground, but because we have this resistance from our return wire, what can happen is if we get current flowing through here from our AC load, of course we're going to have a voltage drop. And then we're going to have a small AC voltage here, which can distort whatever signal is being output from our camera. 
And so what the end result might look like is over here in our display, maybe we get some static or some distortion in our display such that we can't see it or maybe it's not as clean as we would like for it to be. So there are different ways that we can solve this. In this particular case, what the, what the author describes having done is in our, between sort of our camera and our display is inputting something called an isolation transformer. And so our isolation transformer is essentially going to get rid of any of that common mode uh, distortion. And so here is our isolation transformer. And so it's going to basically help us to block any of this noise that has arisen due to our ground cable. Um, some other names for that, we might hear it, it, this isolation transformer called a ground loop isolator or direct boxes. So let's move on to a little simpler sort of situation. So let's consider we have some wiring for five different units. Let's say it's in some processing factory and all of these units need to be connected to our same ground potential. Uh, so not uncommon, we wanna ground all of our equipment. Let's assume as well that unit number five is the one that's consuming the most power. And so what we're gonna look at is two connection schemes. So our first method we're gonna look at is our daisy chaining. And so a couple advantages of our daisy chain method is it's going to be cheaper and it's going to be more flexible in terms of where we wanna put these, these units. So more flexible for location. Um, and of course it's cheaper because we're, and again, it's hard to say cheaper because we're, we've not looked at our second method yet, but we'll come back to that in a little bit. Um, but let's think about maybe some problems that would arise with this first method. So we've said that our unit five is going to be consuming the most power. Uh, so that means it's going to be drawing the most current. And so what we can see is if we have a large current being drawn, then that current is going to be flowing through all of these components here. So we're going to have our large current, which is going through every other, every other sort of grounding wire connected to all the other components. And so what that can do is we can then have that, uh, that ground loop, that current in that ground loop causing different voltages. So of course, remember we're saying these are non-ideal cables. So really we have some resistance for each, each section of our cable here. And so ultimately what that results in is some voltage drop between all of these different points that should be at the same potential. And so why is that a problem? Well, maybe some of these other units have low level signals that they're sending to one another or to various things. And these low level signals could be obscured or contaminated by that noise on our ground line. So let's say our large, the, so the main problem here is our large current for unit five goes through all ground cabling And so what we then get is we get voltage differences which can obscure low level signals. And so similar idea to what we talked about with that camera example. Okay, so, but remember this does have the advantage of being cheaper and more flexible. Um, so let's take a look at our second method which is our star type or one point method. And so in this case, we can see that each of our five units is connected directly to the ground of our AC power source, as opposed to going to one, then to two, then to three, and so on. And so of course this has a disadvantage of, we're not going to have that same flexibility in terms of where we can put our units. We also might need more in cabling but of course the advantage is we're gonna be at a much lower risk for ground loops. So again, we have this independent lead for each unit. And another thing that you'll notice from this figure is that our unit five 
is closer to our source than any of the other ones. So when we're using this star type or this one point connection method, what we want to do is we want to place units that consume the most power closest to the power source ground. So place units consuming the most power near our power source ground. And so of course the reason for that is if our unit is consuming more power, that means a larger current. And so this cabling is going to have some associated resistance, which is going to be proportional to the length. So we want to keep that length smaller to keep our resistance smaller, to keep any voltage drop across that cabling to a minimum, such that we can approximate it that these two separate points are both at ground potential. So one other thing to sort of just mention in passing is that things get more complicated as we're looking at radio frequency circuits. So more complicated with our RF circuits, particularly if we're talking about creating RF circuits to be used on printed circuit boards or PCBs. And typically when we're designing RF circuits for PCBs, we, also have, we often have to use something called ground planes. So instead of worrying about where particular points are grounded, there's entire ground planes in our geometry. And so that's sort of a, a much more complicated concept and something that you could fill an entire class with, PCB design. Um, but this is just another one of those things that I want you guys to at least be aware of.